Welcome to Introduction to the Personal Computer. This short movie will go into the vocabulary that will help you tremendously before shopping for a computer or asking for assistance on your existing computer. There was a need identified that uh, there are mature individuals who want to learn about computers, but they may have missed out learning about computers in school because perhaps the courses weren't available or maybe they didn't exist at that time. Perhaps they live too far from adult education programs, libraries, or community centers. Uh, perhaps they're unable to ask others for help for whatever reason, but they want to become part of the computer generation. Seroptimus International is an organization with the mission to improve the lives of women and girls in local communities and throughout the world. The match was perfect. This series of easy to follow movies to increase computer knowledge attempts to fill this need and it's been designed by Seroptimus members. Topics covered in this movie are the, the vocabulary words a personal computer, desktop, laptop, display, keyboard, mouse, tablets, touch screens, hardware, CPU, RAM, operating systems, printers, and software. The vocabulary is crucial. If you go into a, a computer store to buy a computer, the sales staff will ask you questions. And it's very intimidating and overwhelming if you don't know some of the vocabulary and know how to respond to them. Further, if you have a computer and you want to ask for help, even if it's from a friend on the telephone or a friend you want to go and talk to, this it, it really helps to know the words, the vocabulary. And also, if you go to that dreaded online tech support, you really need to know the vocabulary. What is a personal computer? I think the basic four parts are the display or the monitor, the CPU, the central processing unit, or what I call the brains, the mouse, and the keyboard. Let's talk about those one at a time. A desktop computer. The advantages of a desktop computer is that generally the display or the monitor is bigger and this is very nice if you have challenges with your vision or if you like to do work with artwork, photography, or graphics. Um, I find the keyboard is more comfortable on a desktop computer because I get the split keyboard. I have a picture of one off to the side here and this has really helped with my carpal tunnel issues and I, I just don't have those problems anymore with the split keyboard. The disadvantages, of course, are that it's not portable and it takes up much more space on the work desk. Laptop computers are very popular. They're quite portable and they save you money when you're taking them to a computer store for getting them fixed or if you're asking for help or taking classes. Obviously, they take up a lot less space. The disadvantages are they have a small display, but you can plug in a larger screen, but then that adds to the cost. I find the keyboard is cramped because of the issues I was talking about earlier with carpal tunnel. Um, it can be more expensive if you add on an, a, an external uh, keyboard, an external uh, monitor, and that kind of thing. Let's talk about tablets and touch screens. The advantages, of course, that they're very small and very convenient, and they're wonderful for watching any kind of media. They're very easy to use because all you do is touch the screen to make it work. The disadvantages are that the keyboards can be very, very small and sometimes non-existent and can be challenging to use. The software and the storage of file are all done remotely and are not stored locally. This is uh, generally referred to as working in the clouds. The CPU or the central processing unit uh, was what I refer to as the brains of the computer. It's often in a tower, uh, but it can be tucked away neatly inside a laptop and you don't even know it's there. The size of the CPU often determines how fast your computer will operate, how fast the information can be processed. So pay attention to the numbers. And speaking of numbers, we talk about them in bytes. One byte is the smallest information on a computer. A thousand bytes is one kilobyte. A thousand kilobytes is one megabyte. A thousand megabytes is one gigabyte. Generally, personal computers are referred to in the gigs, two or three gigs. 1,000 gigabytes then is a terabyte, which is very large. RAM stands for Random Access Memory, which is the temporary memory. The RAM holds all of your active work, and if your computer crashes, this often is what uh, the information that you will lose. Computers also tend to freeze when the RAM is overloaded. So get, uh, get the most RAM you can, and remember to save often. Operating systems manage the computer resources. 
The two most common types are the Microsoft Windows Operating System and the Macintosh Operating System. Note this uh, picture I have here of the Macintosh off to the side. You don't even see the, uh, the CPU because it's tucked away inside the monitor. A very nice design. The display, the monitor, or visual display unit, those words all mean the same. They're very similar to a television screen. The quality is measured by DPI, or dots per inch. The more DPI per inch equals a better picture, and I think televisions are um, measured in the same way. The prices vary, of course, depending on the size and the quality. The standard keyboard that we use here in the United States is the QWERTY keyboard, Q-W-E-R-T-Y, which is named after the first six letters in the top row. Now your keyboard, as pictured below, may include a 10 keypad, or it might not. The split keyboards help prevent carpal tunnel issues, which I've discussed earlier. When purchasing a computer, think also about buying a, a compatible printer at the same time. Don't be led by the printer price only, as ink might be very expensive. I was uh, given a very good price on a, a printer one time and was shocked to find out how tiny the ink cartridges were, how quickly they needed to be replaced, and how expensive they were. A printer can also be part of a multi-functioning unit. A printer can also be a copier, a fax, and a scanner. That's nice and handy. Software programs, not operating systems now, keep those separate. Software programs perform specific tasks. The Microsoft Office Suite contains specific programs. Microsoft Word is a program for writing words and text. Microsoft Excel is a program for numbers with formulas, um, making charts and graphs. Microsoft PowerPoint is a program, I'm using it right now for this slideshow. Microsoft Outlook is an incredible organizing tool as it has your calendar, emails, and contacts. Microsoft Access and Publisher are additional programs that are generally purchased in a little bit larger package of the Office Suite. Adobe is another company that makes Photoshop, Acrobat, Flash, and other programs. Intuit makes Quicken, QuickBooks, and TurboTax. My colleague Linda has some tips to share with you. She reminds us that Microsoft Word is worth buying even at the student level, which is the very basic level, as it will take care of most of your needs. Keep all of your software CDs in a special place, as you never know when you might need to access them again. Write down all the serial numbers and keep them somewhere else for quick reference in case your hardware crashes or is stolen. Good idea. Know the difference, as I said, between the operating system versus the software. The operating systems are the brains and manage the computer. The software performs the tasks on the operating systems. Where next? Did you know everything in this movie? If not, consider watching it again. Just hit replay. If you know, knew everything, then go to the next movie on the list. Thank you for viewing this YouTube movie.